TK421, why aren't you at your post? Uh, because I'm playing Rogue Squadron 2. Oh, oh, okay, that's, that's a good reason. If you've ever wanted to relive some of the awesome spaceship scenes from the original Star Wars movies, then here's the game for you. Star Wars Rogue Leader, Rogue Squadron 2. This is a 2001 release for the Nintendo GameCube, and as a PlayStation 2 guy back in the day, I never really took the GameCube all that seriously. Now, since I've been producing Classic Game Room, I've played a lot of excellent GameCube games, but none more impressive than this. This is the game that can do the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs. Yes, it's the video game equivalent of Han shooting first, all the Star Wars, none of the Jar Jar. That's right, make them go in. There's no impacting on the surface here. For starters, Rogue Leader is a beautiful game that captures everything stylistically that makes the old school Star Wars movies cool. You get the sense that you're flying all of the beat up old spaceships held together with duct tape in this game. I love that. Let's talk about the awesome spaceships in this game. X-Wing, B-Wing, Y-Wing, A-Wing, Shuttlecraft. There's even a bunch of unlockable stuff, like the Millennium Falcon. Ah! And of course, the Snow Speeders. Now, the events in this game take place during and in between the original Star Wars movies. Not those other ones. And throughout the game, you fly a wide variety of missions. Now, some of them are a lot better than others, but on the whole, it's really good. Rogue Leader is the kind of game that's extremely easy to pick up and play, but it's actually extremely, extremely challenging. It's not an easy game to master. We can't let that data get away. Attack the shield generators. Once the shields are down, we can attack the command. But it does have solid controls. It may take you a few tries to get through each of the missions, and once you get the hang of the game, it certainly all comes together, and it makes for a really rewarding Star Wars arcade-style flying experience. Like blowing up Star Destroyers. That's a dream come true. I will highly recommend, as you're making your way through the game the first time, that after you get a few missions into it, you check an internet walkthrough and then go back and pick up a lot of the hidden upgrades, which will do things like increase your shield strength and blaster power. That'll make life a lot easier later in the game when things get really hard. Now let's take out the last one underneath. As you've seen, there's two camera perspectives, the behind the spaceship view, which looks really cool because you get to admire your favorite Star Wars ships. And there's also a handy cockpit view, as well as a targeting computer, which will always put you in the cockpit view and highlights specifically which targets you're going for. Now, as if the game isn't fun and challenging enough, there's also medals that you can win by performing excellently in missions, and uh, good luck getting all of those. I had a tough time just getting a couple bronzes. Rogue Leader has a ton of things to unlock, and it's just got a lot of value. This was clearly made by people who love Star Wars and put their heart into this game. Another transport. Go after the fighters. Copy, Rogue Leader. It's extremely affordable and easy to find these days. I have two people to thank for donating copies of Rogue Leader. Our friend Lari from Finland and Joe from Florida. All hail Lord Carnage indeed. Affirmative, Rogue Leader. Star Wars Rogue Leader Rogue Squadron 2 is an amazing game for Star Wars fans with a GameCube or a Nintendo Wii. Highly, highly recommended. The Force is strong with this one. And I mean the original Mysterious Force, not that midichlorian crap. 